So there are, of course, legitimate questions as to why Rittenhouse was there, especially since he's a resident of Illinois and really had no business in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now, when you work someplace, <laughs> would you call that uh, you having business there? I would, literally, <laughs> by definition. <laughs> so here is a, here's another. I'll back it up a bit so I don't cut it off in the middle of the thing. But this is this is one of the, this is lie number one in this video. Well, source legitimate. Rittenhouse was there to clean graffiti. You want to say something before we look at You know, she... She doesn't mention at all, if I recall correctly, that he worked as a lifeguard in Kenosha. Yeah, yes. And they keep doing this weird thing. It's so funny that, like, you know, the people that are so pro-immigration, you know, think of the poor oh, illegal know. immigrants, you know. But suddenly, like, so apparently the, the borders of the country don't matter, but the state borders, oh, this, my God, you cross state lines. When it's like, maybe this is because Anna lives in, I don't know, they live in New York in or Los California Angeles. or yeah. L.A. or wherever, where the state is massive and they live in the middle of it. And they don't understand this, but like if you live in a state near the, you know, he only, it only took him like 15 minutes, I think, to drive from where he lived to Kenosha. Yeah. Okay. It's like he's not commuting two hours to work. Right. Like if he works there and he's cleaning schools there and he hang and his stepfather lives there, I believe, yeah. he obviously spends a lot of time there. Okay. So it's not like when you, when you're driving 15 minutes, okay. You don't, and you magically cross some, you know, state line. You don't magically say like, "Oh, well, I suddenly don't care about this part of the country anymore because there's an invisible state line I cross." It's like, well, no, this is where I spend my time. This is where I work. This is where I hang out. Like, yeah. this argument makes no fucking sense. This is this is the legalese way of lying to an audience. That's exactly yes. what's going on. What yes. they, what they want to say, what they really want to say is that Kyle Rittenhouse came from a long, long distance away. That's what they want to say. That's the lie. That's right. what you're supposed to hear when they say that. Well, but they yeah. can't say that because he didn't come from a long ways away. He came from 15 minutes away. <laughs> okay. So instead of saying the lie that Kyle Rittenhouse drove three days out of his way wearing diapers so he didn't have to pull over and pee <laughs> so he could get to this thing, uh, they say the lie version of it. They say yes. he crossed state lines and crossed. had no business crossing, coming all this 15 minutes away distance to, to yeah. get there. It's terrible. Right. It's, yeah. it's lying by omission. No, you're exactly correct. Because what they're doing is they're trying to frame this like, oh, Kyle Rittenhouse came here to shoot people. Yes. That's the narrative. Kyle Rittenhouse came to shoot Black Lives Matter protesters. He was even willing to cross state lines to do this. This wasn't his community he was protecting. Yeah. It's like, actually, it was. Actually, it fucking was. It was his community. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it it's sick. It's totally sick. And the, the, like this clinging to the state lines thing, because you, like, just so you can lie. I don't even think she's smart enough to know that she's lying. But that's the lie. <laughs> that's the lie. That's what your brain hears. Your brain hears, oh, he came from. Uh, hours away. Right, no, right. he didn't. They're lying to you. And help protect the city from more destruction, his lawyer said. So, uh, you know, there are, of course, legitimate questions as to why Rittenhouse was there, especially since he's a resident of Illinois and really had no business in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So what his lawyer is trying to do here is make the case that he acted in self-defense in using his weapon. Uh, and he's also trying to explain why Rittenhouse would be there in the first place. Richards, the defense attorney here. He, he, so he's trying to explain why he would be there in the first place. I mean, he could just say, <laughs> like he did just say, that he's a lifeguard in Kenosha, that he works in Kenosha, that his right. stepdad uh, lives in Kenosha. Which he did say. <laughs> like, you know. Well, and it's funny, too, because even though that's all true, even if Kyle Rittenhouse was from Alaska and he took an airplane and he flew all the way down the Kenosha because he saw it wouldn't change anything. the yeah. violence on TV and he was so moved by these poor people that own these shops, someone, some American citizen needs to do something to protect these people and their businesses, okay, that they've worked hard to establish their whole lives, okay? Even if he flew in from Alaska, it would make no difference. Yes. It has nothing to do with the case whatsoever. The the only reason it's interesting is because it it goes to the state of mind of these goddamn fucking liars.
They're, this is all lies. This well, is all it's, yes. lies. It's an um, it's an obvious emotional manipulation tactic to say, oh, why was he here? It's like, bitch, why were the fucking rioters there? Why are people burning down buildings? Why are people attacking the police and trying to attack the courthouse? Why were any of those fucking people there? Mm. But no, it only applies to Kyle. Turn to the people who were shot by Rittenhouse, characterizing them as hostile and belligerent. I'm going to back it up a little here. Which they literally were. Richards, the defense attorney were. here, turned to the people who were shot by Rittenhouse, characterizing them as hostile and belligerent. So he said, Rosenbaum said, if I find you alone, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah, she does not see any of these things as factual she has a a picture in her head of yes you know these these protesters you know were delivering flowers and candies to people <laughs> everyone was nice and and saying hello and dressed nicely and mm -hmm. and the evil evil defense attorney wants to misrepresent them as hostile and belligerent never once does she you know think Maybe they were hostile and belligerent. Maybe we have video evidence that they were hostile and belligerent. Right. And the the other guy who testified, who, you know, everyone's focusing on McGinnis. Um, and I think the real the real hero for the defense is uh, Ryan Balch. Oh Balch. yeah, Balch. He, that was the guy, that was the guy that was with Kyle, and he's the one that says, you know, he's the one that said that. Um, that backed up Kyle and said that uh, Rosenbaum threatened them, and the state didn't. The state did not contend that they did not fight against contested, that yeah, or contested, yeah, whatsoever. He's the one that's, and he he testified that every time he saw Rosenbaum, he was attempting to get into an altercation with other people there, and other protesters had to hold him back. Yeah, he's the one that testified that other protesters would come to him and other people that were def that were defending the car lot and apologize and say. Listen, don't judge us for this this crazy Rosenbaum guy. We don't know who he is. He's just some crazy person, you know. He's not with us. He's not with us. I think he categorized like, him as hyper aggressive. <laughs> yes. Yes, and he and he and he character and he said that he tried to attack other people. He, he did. Attempted to attack other people, and he saw him trying to start fires. And he talked about how other people had wit had witnessed that Rosenbaum and, and people that that dis, that matched Rosenbaum's description and Zemeckis's description were the ones that were the, this group of three were the ones that every situation trying to cause trouble, trying to start fires, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Zeme but no, you Zeme know. Zemeckis is in the video where he is at the gas station yelling racial epithets, and yes. in the video you can see Z Zemeckis has his gun in his hand. You can see it in the video. Yeah. yeah, which means he wasn't concealing his weapon. He had it out in his yeah, right no, hand his, all yeah. the time. Right, and 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 Balch even said that not only did he have his pistol out, but he had his finger on the trigger as he was walking around with the gun. Yeah, okay. he's the guy that shot in the air behind Kyle Rittenhouse. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If anything, I is he gonna? I don't. Why isn't he taking the stand? I don't know. It's a good question. Why isn't he being charged with with firing his gun in the air? He's prob. They're probably not putting him on the stand because he's just going to lie and there's no they don't want that in the case he was right. there too he's going to say oh I saw it and it was completely different sure, sure yeah so what we had shared with you earlier in regard to the judge in this case allowing the defense attorney or the defense to use that kind of rhetoric to kind of paint a picture <laughs> of the very people who were shot and killed that is playing out However, as we had also shared with you earlier, the prosecutors are not allowed to use the word victim when referring to the individuals who were shot, including the two who were shot and killed by Rittenhouse. Remember okay, so this is lie number two right here because mm -hmm. this is basically a mischaracterization of the, the decision that the judge made. The judge makes this decision in every single case where they're arguing over the victim status of the people involved. He says you right. can't use the victim status because what what is the, I'll cite your favorite 
podcaster Scott Adams. What does he <laughs> call it? It's like thinking past the sale, I believe it is. Yes. He's past. like, you've already established, once you say victim, you've already established that the person is guilty. Right. And we can't prejudice the jury in that way. So if if this was a case with a black defendant, I have no doubt that uh, that news skirt here would be telling you a completely <laughs> different story about the situation right. and how this judge is the is probably the coming of the progressive god of judicial reform and how how amazing it is that he doesn't allow the jury being prejudiced with this innocent black man on the on the stand by calling the 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 people in the case victims like it would be a completely different story and it's funny because um what's the, what's the other guy the other tyt guy's name mm -hmm. who has like his own little spinoff show uh, yeah, I can't remember his name, but go, it's not important. Um, yeah, oh, I just looked at the video too. He anyway, he he made literally this point like yesterday. <laughs> he's like, well, he's on TYT, and he made the point. Yeah, not to Anna. Uh, he made it to someone else. Right. <laughs> oh, but he is. I just thought it was funny that he he made this point. He realized he's like, well, you know, the progressives will say that you know, oh, it's a good thing that you know we're you know, defending people that are accused by the state of these things and you shouldn't call them victims and blah, blah, blah. You know, so he, so he sort of conceded this entire point to some extent while John, still trying John to- John you know, Yeah, I think that's who it was. Thank you, Derek. Well, while trying to uh, still levy that Kyle was, you know, the evil bad guy.